Welcome everyone. It's lovely to have everyone here. Um, so happy you could join us for the second webinar. Um, my name is Haley Clemson and I am the Assistant Program Officer on the Indo-Pacific Programs team at Cultural Vistas, supporting the YPL Small Grants Program. For those of you who may not have worked with Cultural Vistas previously, I'll share a little bit more about the organization and help to offer some more context. We're a nonprofit international organization that works in exchange, and we are the implementing partners for the YPL Small Grants Program, which is funded by the US Department of State and made possible by the US Department of State US Mission to New Zealand. This is important to note because all YPL Small Grant Program deadlines and times will be synced with New Zealand time. The YPL Small Grants Program is a program under the YPL or Young Pacific Leaders Initiative, a youth leadership development initiative organized by the US Department of State. It was launched in 2018 and so far has had four full iterations with this being the fifth. Through the YPL Small Grants Program, YPL alumni have the opportunity to apply for seed funding to implement innovative projects throughout the Pacific region focused on improving their communities, countries, and the region in one or more of the program's core pillars, which are education, environment and resource management, economic and social development, and civic leadership. To help interested alumni prepare to apply for this year's YPL Small Grants Program, Cultural Vistas is hosting these preparatory webinars to provide additional information and guidance to help teams with their project proposals. The first webinar took place last week on the 1st of December and was focused on helping interested teams better understand what is required for the application itself, the program requirements, and how to write a compelling and competitive proposal. The second webinar is intended to help interested teams to better understand the roles of each core team member and will help to provide a few different tips for you to consider while organizing a project and putting together a team. Next week's webinar, which will be the final webinar, is taking place on the 15th of December and will review the development of a thorough and detailed budget and budget justification narrative. All webinars will be held at 9 a.m. New Zealand time via Zoom using the same access information that you used today. And although webinar attendance is not required, it is strongly encouraged for you to attend these webinars or to watch the recording as there will be important information provided that will help assist with applications as well as will be a chance to answer any questions that you may have during the webinar Q&A portion. It's also an opportunity to better understand all of the requirements for grant applications not related to the YPL Small Grants Program and what grant applications generally work, require and look for in applications. For those of you joining us live today, at the end of the presentation, we will have time for Q&A. And once we get to that section of the webinar, you can please raise your hand and we'll go to you for your question. If you have any questions throughout, you're welcome to submit them in the chat and we'll answer them at the end of the presentations as well. For those unable to attend today, you can email any questions to yplgrants at culturalvistas.org and those will be answered and possibly discussed further during the next webinar. So with that, we'll jump right in. On the screen, you'll find a brief program timeline. This is to outline for you the remaining webinar dates and program related dates that you need to be aware of if applying for the program. We share this each week so that any new webinar attendees have an overview of the dates that they should be aware of as an applicant. You'll see that we have the final webinar next week, which will be covering the topic of budget curation and project management. Many of you have budget questions um, and we'll be able to answer those then. The webinar is scheduled for the 15th of December at 9 a.m. New Zealand time via, via Zoom with the same access information that you used today. Also listed in the timeline is the application deadline, which is on the 7th of January, 2024, 
at 11.59 p.m. New Zealand time. You'll also see the expected notification time of selected applicants, which is February 2024, and you'll be notified of your selected or non-selected projects via email by Cultural Vistas. Once the selected grantees are finalized and teams have confirmed their participation in the program, Cultural Vistas will begin travel arrangements for all three core team members to attend a mandatory kickoff workshop in Auckland, New Zealand over the dates of the 19th and 20th of March, 2024. This workshop will prepare the selected core team members for the beginning of their small grants implementation of their project. Attendance during the workshop is required for all three core team members. And this date is important to note as you apply um, for all three of your core team members so that those selected know that they are expected to attend. Teams will implement projects from April through September, 2024. Once the project implementation period is complete, Cultural Vistas will arrange a debriefing seminar to discuss the learnings, challenges, and successes of the project implementation. This is projected for October of 2024 in Auckland, New Zealand, and all teams are required to have one core team member in attendance as their team representative. Today, we're going to discuss organizing a strong team to help you implement your small grants proposal ideas. For your YPL small grants program, it's required that each proposed project include a project leader, project treasurer, and project secretary. These members will be deemed the core team members. These are the key supporting members of the project and those who ensure the pro and those that ensure that the project is in line to meet the proposed goals, as any successful project needs a strong team behind it. The proposal requires outlining these three core team members, not only to make your proposal stronger by showing that there are three people supporting your project, but also to prepare a team to help delineate responsibility across the project if selected. Many teams are made up of members who have their own jobs and work outside of the project, so it's important to have team members to work together with as you carry out your implementation. So to submit a proposal, the team must meet the following eligibility requirements. At least one core team member must be a former YPL alumnus, meaning that someone on the core team must have previously attended a YPL program. Not all core team members have to be alumni, just one member per core team per project. So this can be any of the core team member roles, the project leader, project treasurer, or project secretary. However, every project needs to have at least one YPL alumnus. There can be more than one alumnus per team as well. Um, there are no restrictions on this and a team can consist of all YPL alumni. However, at least one is what is required. All core team members must be between the ages of 25 to 40 and possess citizenship from a YPL member country. US citizens must demonstrate that their project is regionally focused outside of the United States, be part of a cross country team, or provide a cultural exchange element. So this is due to the US federal regulations outlined in the funding that makes the program possible. This is also a great reminder for any project to collaborate across the Pacific. We've had many cross country projects and always support this collaboration. Consider your resources and other YPL alumni across the Pacific as you're developing your program. They are a huge resource for these projects. If your proposal does include cross country or exchange elements, consider that your proposal may be stronger if you select core team members from each location or country that your project works in so that you have a strong team and a presence in all project locations. The project must also address at least one of the following YPL pillar themes of education, environment and resource management, civic leadership and economic and social development. 
Lastly, previous YPL Small Grants Program core team members, so any past project leader, treasurer, or secretary are ineligible to, apply, to reapply. So you can find these eligibility requirements listed on the application, as well as if you, if you need to revisit them at any time, you can find them there. As you put together your project proposals, and especially your teams, it's important to understand the roles, responsibilities, and requirements of each specific core team member. So first off, we have the project leader. The project leader is the person who holds the overall responsibility for the successful initiation, planning, design, execution, monitoring, and closure of a small grants project. So throughout the entire implementation period. The project leader is the head of project implementation and will help to delineate responsibilities to other members of the project especially the other pro project core team members. The project leader will help manage and guide the team as well as the different phases of the project as they are developed and implemented. They are the go-to person for the project and will need to be the most flexible of the three core team members given that they may need to step in at certain times to help ensure that all phases of the project are moving in accordance with the work plan and implementation timeline. They also need to be the leader of those supporting and working on the project and must set clear achievable goals for the project in consultation with the other core team members. It's very important for project teams to work collaboratively and together towards the project's goals, with each core team member having their set individual goals and responsibilities. As the core team, and more specifically the project leader, you must try to build a team that works together with common aims, all working towards the same final goal. One of the biggest pieces of the project leader's role is clear and open communication. Throughout the small grants process, as projects are developed, selected, and implemented, communication is key to ensuring success. It's important that the core team operate harmoniously as a team and that the project can only be successful with the work of all members and their respective roles. Often the project leader is the guide and the force behind ensuring open communication among team members. Another level of communication required of the project leader is to the funder or overall grant program manager. In this case, that will be Cultural Vistas. Project leaders are expected to keep Cultural Vistas up to date on major project updates and issues, as well as project related information as needed or requested. Next, we have the project treasurer. The project treasurer will handle all finances of the YPL Small Grants Project, including the, the receiving of the grant funds themselves, the budget tracking, the budget management, and providing any budget updates or information asked for by the, the funder. The treasurer should be able to receive the YPL gr Small Grants funds um, transfers to their bank account from a U.S. bank account. It's required that upon project selection the, that the project treasurer provides their banking information for the funds to be dispersed to the project. Throughout the implementation period, the treasurer will be instrumental in the project budgeting and budget tracking to ensure that any expenses are in line with the approved budget initially given at the proposal. The project treasurer should continue to keep track of funds and expenses, as well as have an organized system for logging any receipts of related project purchases throughout the full project implementation period. Each monthly report, they will need to provide budget updates, including a narrative and receipt tracking to the project secretary who will be submitting the reports to Cultural Vistas throughout the implementation period. Again, it's important that this person be trustworthy, organized, and reliable so that they can fulfill all these tasks. Small grants project funds will be dispersed in three separate intervals throughout the program. 
The first will be for 60% at the beginning of implementation, immediately following the kickoff workshop in March. Then 35% will be sent in the middle of implementation and 5% at the end after completion. Again, the person acting as treasurer should be trustworthy, organized, and have a bank account to receive the funds, as well as be prepared to track all expenses and keep an organized log of program receipts. Considering that small changes to your budget may be necessary during implementation, they should be able to make suggestions to your team on how funds can be moved around and be able to communicate any changes needed to the funder or the team leader to communicate out. Last of the core te team members, but certainly not least, the project secretary. The project secretary will compile all monthly, midterm, and final reports, submitting them with provided instructions from Cultural Vistas. The project secretary's role also includes managing communications like project narratives, photo documenting, and social media engagement. The person in this role should also communicate project updates to Cultural Vistas often. Failure to provide this up-to-date information on the status of the project and, the, and to provide the required reports in a timely fashion could result in the loss of funding for the project. So it's important to select someone for this role who's organized, good at communicating, and able to follow deadlines. So while you're putting together the project's proposal, it's very important to consider your team and the responsibilities associated with each of these roles, as well as the skills and the time commitment needed to fulfill the roles. A synchronized and reliable team helps to ensure smooth and successful project implementation and provides a strong support system for the project in helping to reach the project goals. In all the roles and within the team, it's important to maintain clear and open communication. Each core team member should ensure that the other core team members know what is going on with the project, especially when it comes to project objectives, delays, or issues, as these will affect all three core team members and the responsibilities that they are required to fulfill in their roles. Putting together a project proposal and ensuring a strong team will impact each part of your project implementation, as implementing your project will require that all roles step in and fill their responsibilities in order for the project to succeed. For example, submitting your required monthly reports with a strong core team will be a team effort in which each core team member fulfills their piece of the puzzle. The project leader may be overseeing that the reports are ready on time and that other core team members are on top of their responsibilities and have the support that they needed and the awareness of anything happening in the project that needs to be reported on. They may also be monitoring the progress of the project overall in relation to the work plan and contacting cultural vistas with any updates or concerns before the submission deadline of that report. The project treasurer would be working on their portion of the report, a budget report and any receipt tracking to get it to the secretary in time to include in the monthly report submission. The secretary would be compiling all these pieces of information that are needed for the report and submitting the report on time. So as you can see, Strong core team member teamwork is needed to meet these deadlines and communication across the team is important to ensure that the project implementation in each aspect runs smoothly. This is just one example of why a strong core team is so important. Now that you know more about each role and the responsibilities associated with that role, there are some things to consider while putting together your team. First of all, methods of communication. What methods work best for those who are taking on the core team member roles for your project? 
Additionally, it's important to think through what other team capacity you will need. For example, if it's an exchange program or workshop, you may need volunteers. Spelling out who will be responsible for those types of project pieces are also important. So delegating and clearly communicating additional roles is important not only for those volunteers, for example, but also in building out your team with clear designation of who will be responsible for managing those volunteers. Additionally, scheduling and time con commitment so while six months is not a long time in terms of project implementation, as we discussed last week, it's important to remember that on this, that when thinking about the scale of your project and what you can achieve in six months, six months can be a long time in terms of time commitment for those that are involved, especially when balancing work and school commitments on top of the project. So it's imperative that those signing onto the project as a core team member can commit the time needed to implement and fulfill the full project requirements throughout the program's entirety from April to September of 2024. This is something that should be discussed with your core team members as you're putting together your proposal. And each core team member should have an understanding of the requirements needed for that role that they're taking on and be willing to commit the amount of time needed for the six month implementation period. The larger time commitments to keep in mind in regard with the overall YPL Small Grants programming are the program kickoff workshop. So to help selected teams digest the information, understand the requirements further, and have the opportunity to refine their projects, make final budget adjustments, and get feedback on their projects. Um, all three core team members are required to attend a kickoff workshop in Auckland, New Zealand over the dates of the 19th and 20th of March, 2024. All programming and expenses for this workshop will be covered by YPL and arranged by Cultural Vistas. So you do not need to budget for this in your project proposal. However, it's important to consider the kickoff workshop as a requirement at this stage in your proposal, as all core team members will require will be required to be there. Um, and the date comes up not long after the selection of projects. So all core team members at the time of proposal should be aware of these dates and able to commit to attending. An additional time commitment to keep in mind is the debriefing seminar. At the conclusion of the program, a debriefing seminar will be held where all teams will be asked to represent the project and share the successes, challenges, highlights, and more of the past six months. This is projected for October of 2024, also in Auckland, New Zealand. All three core team members are not required to attend the debriefing seminar. However, teams will be asked to send a team representative from their core team to travel and attend. This can be the team leader, treasurer, or secretary, and the team will have the opportunity to decide who they would like to represent their project at the debriefing seminar. However, it is important that one of your team members be there, um, and the date is important to think about even at the stage of proposal. Again, for the debriefing seminar, you can keep in mind that all programming and, and expenses for this seminar will be covered by YPL and arranged by Cultural Vistas. So again, you do not need to budget for this in your project proposal. For more information on team and program requirements, please refer to culturalvistas.org slash YPL or reference the application itself. Um, you can also find this information on the program requirements listed in the application, um, which is linked on the slide that you can see now. You can also find the application link in our previously sent YPL network emails or in the YPL alumni Facebook group. If at any time you need help locating it, you can email yplgrants at culturalvistas.org 
Before we move on to questions, now that you have a better idea of the roles and responsibilities of your core team members for the project, here are a few more things to consider and keep in mind. Put a great deal of thought into your project team members and be sure to understand the commitment that each is making. For those proposals that are planning a project across countries, keep in mind differing time zones, currencies, cultural traditions, customs, and preferred and accessible methods of communication so that you can keep in touch and communicate effectively as a team. It's helpful, it's helpful to ensure that you have clarified the processes and activities that will lead to the project's outputs and deliverables while thinking through your work plan. If you put that time in now, it will help with the success of your project down the line if, if selected. On that note, when considering your work plan, it's also helpful to develop one that provides you with the information that enables your team to estimate properly the budget and resources that you need and defines a project's goals and scope. This will help you get an idea of how to jump into your project implementation if selected. This will help you visualize the entire project and see the interdependencies between project responsibilities and roles. This will also help to show the task breakdown across core team members and other supporting team members, as well as how to forecast your resource requ requirements within the funding disbursement timeline. Going off of that, when developing your timeline and your proposal, make sure that the funding disbursement timeline matches your work plan timeline and that your timeline will be feasible with the amount of funding that you have at any given time during implementation. To revisit what we discussed a little while ago, this will be in funding disbursements of 60% at the beginning of implementation 35% in the middle, and 5% at the end. This will also be revisited in more detail in next week's webinar on budgeting management. Monitoring and evaluation is also an important piece of your project. Thinking about how you will be tracking the project pieces and what methods work best for your team is very helpful when it comes to reporting and M&E. On that note, you should also think through the different monitoring and evaluation methods for tracking project progress. How will you indicate the measured achieved milestones? This allows you to keep your project on task and have an understanding throughout implementation of whether you're on track to meet your project goals and objectives. Another important piece to think about is what your plan for longer term sustainability is, as well as if you need a public facing communication strategy. Social media is a great tool. Although you don't need to have all these detailed details ironed out at the stage of your project proposal, it's great to start thinking about how you can have communications and social media to help get your project out there and have the community understand the work that you're doing. Last and certainly not least, do you have a backup plan for various components of your project? If yes, what other resources would you need? Planning for the unexpected is important at this stage as anything can happen throughout implementation that you may not have foreseen. It's important to not only think about the required pieces of a project proposal, but additionally those pieces that will occur after implementation begins. If you set yourself up for success in the proposal and your project is selected, that will greatly help you when you have to start jumping into that project implementation in April after the kickoff workshop. Again, we mention this now because the proposal is setting the scene for the rest of your project implementation period and mitigating for the unexpected in your planning can help you later on. So that is all we have for the webinar this week. Um, we can now go on to Q&A. 
Um, I'll check the chat for any questions that you may have, um, but also feel free to raise your hand um, or unmute if you have any questions. Um, and we'll end the recording now for anybody to watch later on the website.